Some American primary and secondary school students are already back in school. The rest will go back in coming weeks. Many of those in America's public schools will be attending institutions that are underfunded and overwhelmed, and therefore the students are likely to underperform. The solutions to America's problems and the problems of other nations with struggling schools can be found simply by taking lessons from the nations that get education right. My next guest, Andreas Schleicher, has been schooling himself on education for decades. He works for the OECD and is the mastermind behind the PISA tests, which compare school systems around the world. And he has written a fascinating book about the lessons he's learned. It's called World Class, Building a 21st Century School System. Welcome, Andres. <clears throat> First, explain the PISA test, which I think is very important people understand. The United States does not do very well on this test. But what, you, what, you, what I think people need to understand is it is a test that measures problem solving, intelligence, creativity. It is not just cramming of facts, right? Absolutely. We put less weight on content knowledge and more on your capacity to think like a scientist, to think like a mathematician, to solve complex problems, to work together with others in teams. Those are really essential skills for success tomorrow. And we combine those data on the outcomes with you know, information on the context of schools, of teachers, so that we can actually also not only see where countries come out, but also what drives success. The United States, being one of the richest countries in the world, does pretty badly. And is it fair to say, uh, first, uh, unpack that for us, because the thing that strikes me about it is that American averages are often low because there's a wide variety within America. The top performing schools do pretty well, but it's the bottom performing ones that do really, really badly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the American school system succeeds in preparing some students really well. But there are also many other students falling behind. And much of that has to do with the social context and from which students come and which schools operate. And uh, so that's basically the large disparities in the outcomes. And uh, but particularly, the, the greatest challenge are in mathematics, where the United States ranks 30th among 35 OECD countries. So uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. What do you, uh, you know, you've heard the American uh, debate about, about education uh, going on. There's people who say the schools need more funding, the teachers need better pay, uh, and then there are people who say, no, the structure of the school system is what the problem is. You have this you know, government monopoly, you need more choice, you need more variety. What do you think the answer is? Well, the first thing it has to do with the value you place on education. You know, Chinese parents and grandparents are going to invest their last time, their last effort, their last money into the future, and that is the education of their children. In the United States and in Europe too, we have already spent the money of our children for our consumption. So basically getting that right is important. Uh, but money only gets you that far. In fact, a lot more is about how we spend that money. Now, it's about prioritizing the quality of teachers and teaching over things like the size of classes. You know, in the United States, only every second dollar actually arrives in the classroom. So making sure that the money really squarely relates to how students learn, where students learn. And in America, as I recall, from one of your reports, America is almost unique in the rich countries in the world in that it spends less money on poor school districts uh, and more money on rich ones. Everywhere else, it's the other way around. You assume that the poorer districts need more money, yeah. but because in America we fund education through local property taxes, you actually have the, the opposite. Yeah, that's actually an outlier. Now, most countries have, you know, put more money into disadvantage, but more importantly, they also try to get the better resources. Yeah. And it's not so much, you know, the number of teachers is, do you really make sure that every student benefits from excellent learning? The places that do really well, I mean, and China, as you say, is extraordinary because it's still a middle-income country mm -hmm. in many places a poor country, and its, it's uh, uh, educational outcomes have shot up. Mm -hmm. uh, Singapore does fantastically, South Korea. What I'm struck by is they all have some version of what we would do in America call the common core. There are na national standards. You have to meet them. Yeah. Does that strike you as important? It is very important that we have a clear vision of what good performance really looks like. Now, in a way that students understand what they are studying for, the teachers have an idea of what good student learning really looks like. And that's very hard to do at a very local level. Now, so most countries have a clear vision of what good performance are. There is sort of the 
real belief that every student can learn, even if it takes students different paths to get there. And that's what we see in the outcomes, that actually in the highest performing education systems, neither social background nor context makes much of a difference. The poor, poor, poor kids can, can move very quickly. Think about it this way, that 10% most disadvantaged children in Shanghai, China, do as well as the 10% wealthiest Americans at age 15 in mathematics. Looking at these schools, one of the things that strikes me in, in your book is so many countries have moved so far, so fast. Um, this is not impossible to, do, to, to improve educational outcomes. Well, you know, your school system today is your economy tomorrow. I think most countries have understood it. My own country, Germany, used to be where the United States was in the year 2000, is now at the high end of the performance spectrum. So in Europe, too, we have seen some rapid progress, not everywhere. Vietnam, you know, nobody would have had Vietnam on their radar screen, not in, us included. And it's now a very successful school system. But America has to catch up. I think it's a lot to catch up, but I think international comparisons show that rapid progress is really possible. Andreas, pleasure to have you on.